Hello, everyone. I welcome you all to this session on seamless integration of experienced manager assets with applications. My name is Harsh Chiki. I have been working with AM Assets team for the last five years, and I've worked on multiple innovations around content authoring and content delivery. With me, I also have Soumya, who's co-speaking with me on the topic. And may I request Soumya to take a bit to introduce herself. and part of the experience manager assets team. Today, we are going to talk about how effortlessly we can integrate our AEM assets CS with any web content authoring applications. During this session, if you have any questions, please note we have a dedicated channel for this session where you can post questions and our team would be happy to answer them. So let's get started. Harsh, over to you. Thanks, Soumya. So in this session, we'll talk about the use case uh, we are trying to address the value streams and the require requirements that arise out of it. And we will see how this new asset delivery innovation empowers multi-channel exceptional experiences. We'll talk about a couple of integration patterns with which the solutions can leverage uh, the delivery, which is one via the asset selector UI component and the other, the search API. We'll then talk about the value proposition for developers and then the resources which are accessible and are worthy. So to begin with the use case, so multi-channel exceptional experiences. In this diagram, on the left side, you have this yellow box where we have the assets in AM. These are uploaded, created uh, by the asset authors. The brand managers manage these assets. These blue boxes represent various kind of uh, ex uh, solutions where we uh, author experiences, for example, CMSs, example, AM sites instance, um, uh, the Drupal WordPress, uh, we have the social media management apps. We also have emails. So essentially, experienced authors who are building experiences on these respective applications look forward for a mechanism to search for brand approved assets in AM, embed them into the experience and have them delivered alongside the content or the experience they're building for the experienced visitors to consume and experience. So essentially, this end-to-end -end use case uh, uh, gives rise to these value streams or requirements per se, and they revolve around asset governance, content velocity, or fast experiences uh, for end users. Talking about asset governance, we look forward to having to have single source of truth of assets that is no binary copies. So we want to have central asset governance uh, and brand managers should have a view of it. Uh, we'd want to capture delivery insights, uh, which should be available to brand managers uh, at one place with an aim, and they'd want to uh, take informed decisions based on that. Uh, about content velocity, we look forward to having simple integrations across channels such that uh, we have a lower time to value, lower time to fr uh, fructification of what we're trying to implement as integration. Uh, we'd want to offer a fast experience where we want to leverage the out-of-the-box performant and optimized asset delivery at scale and thus boosting the core Web vital scores and the Google uh, Lighthouse scores, for example. So uh, next, we'll talk about how uh, this new assets uh, delivery innovation empowers multi-channel exceptional experiences. So this service is a suit of API-first and data-first cloud-native services for asset delivery to deliver exceptional experiences integrated with customer value across entire content supply chain. This uh, aims at offering to offering deliver, uh, delivery of exceptional experiences. Uh, for example, lightning fast dynamic delivery from the edge where we leverage the existing out of the box performance uh, optimizations, optimizations we had for del we have for delivery. For example, images, videos. Uh, we want to have secure delivery of brand approved content. We look forward to reduce the total cost of ownership and total time to value. So I'll take a bit to talk about what these terms mean. So total cost of ownership is an estimation of expenses, including time, effort, money associated with purchasing, deploying, uh, integrating, uh, using and retiring a product. And time to value is the time it takes for customers to realize the value they're expecting out of the product. So un un under this scheme of, uh, under this uh, heading of uh, uh, lowering the time, uh, total cost of uh, ownership and time to value, we, lock, uh, we offer central management of uh, brand approved assets. Uh, and we also offer uh, uh, the access using the open API compliant APIs. Uh, and this uh, integration is uh, available across all channels. So with open API compliance, which we get access to a rich tooling ecosystem with support for automated uh, uh, auto generation of uh, the API clients. Uh, we get uh, those integration tests, et cetera, um, uh, auto generated using the universally available tools. It offers to have standardization across also. 
the third thing we are uh, looking for is to have uh, uh, to offer is to derive business insights it want to be capture the usage and deliver insights which helps uh, brand managers take uh, uh, um, informed decisions for example improve roi by eliminating the unused assets so um uh, with the use case in mind, uh, the end-to-end -end flow looks like the assets live in AM assets instance. The brand managers approve those assets, and uh, by approval, those assets become available for search and delivery across uh, all channels by virtue of this asset delivery service. So uh, while approval makes it available, the rejection asset, uh, the rejection uh, action uh, prevents it from search and delivery surfaces. Here is the experience authoring solution where experienced authors are looking forward to uh, search for and embed the uh, brand approved assets. So there are two patterns we'll talk about. One is using the asset selector UI component and other is the search API. I'll talk about them in a bit. And while this experience is uh, being authored here, the delivery happens with the experience and the assets alongside. While the delivery is happening uh, to the end, use, uh, end experience users, the insights have been captured and made available to the brand manager. So I did talk about the two integration patterns here, and I will talk about the integration pattern with asset selector UI component and briefly talk about the delivery API, while Soumya will talk about the integration pattern with search API. So this is how it looks like. The diagram is mostly the same. I'll be talking about integration with asset selector UI component. Before I talk about the integration details, let me uh, briefly introduce you to you the asset selector UI component. Now, this is a UI component which can be plugged into any UI based web app. It offers you the ability to search, perform a full text search here. You can perform filters. You can customize these filters. You can have different views of assets here. You can customize them, of course. Uh, there are multiple views offered. Uh, you can get to access some information about the assets. You can also have some more detailed info by, say, perhaps uh, by, say, clicking on this info icon and have more details about the asset that you're looking for here. You can accordingly select. The selector uh, uh, also supports drag and drop. So we'll talk about that in a bit. So this is what the selector UI component offers you. Uh, we'll talk about the other customizability and other features uh, uh, later in, in later part of this session. And of course, you must have heard about this in the other session uh, talked about by Nazim and Sam. So I'll dem demonstrate the integration and then talk about how the integration works. In this demo, uh, what I'll do is as brand manager, I'll approve the assets in AM or Asset Essentials interface. Then as experienced author, I will edit uh, WordPress posts by searching and embedding approved assets. As we all know, WordPress is a content management system. And then as end experience viewer, I'll view the experience and have those assets delivered and I'll showcase how that happens. So let me take you to the AM um, CS uh, instance, where essentially we have a bunch of assets. Uh, let's say as brand manager, I'd want to approve and have these available for search and delivery across all channels. I go to the properties of these assets. And here is uh, the review status dropdown. I set approved here. This causes uh, the approval of assets, and those are being then made available to the um, um, uh, made available across the search and delivery surfaces. Similarly, you can also perform the approval and rejection in the assets essential interface. I just kept it open beforehand. And of course, I just forgot to mention the AI, the assets author has already uploaded these assets, and which is why I as brand manager is able to view them here. Here you can see you have those statuses here, uh, which is in, which indicates some of the assets are approved and some are rejected. So let's say I want to bring back uh, uh, the rejected assets and make it available uh, uh, in the in the uh, search and delivery surfaces. Let me go to the properties, and here we have the status dropdown, and I can set it to approved, and the approval um, uh, in a bit makes it available across the search and delivery surfaces. If I go back to this uh, um, uh, into, uh, to this uh, screen, I can see that the asset has been approved now. So let me take you to the WordPress and where as experience author, I will draft a post in using the asset selector UI component. So let me build a post. And here I'm attempting to use the asset selector to include brand approved assets in the post. So basically, for illustration purpose, we built a plugin, and we've named it AM Asset Picker. And here is where So uh, before I talk about the login flow here, 
this is an example of solution where the users are on Adobe IMS. Adobe IMS is Adobe Identity Management Service. It's basically an identity, identity provider. So this illustration is about uh, a solution where the users are on IMS so that they can log in onto uh, 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 the IMS using this pop-up and have, uh, have secure access to the assets uh, and search for them. So as you can see, we have these approved assets. I had pre-approved this uh, them for the demo purpose. We have these assets. We have this full text search capability. You have uh, this filtering capability. Uh, I'll talk about how this integration came into place. But let me select an asset. Let's see if I'm looking forward. To, I'm looking forward to integrate this image. I select this, and here is where we have the image. Uh, 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 made part of the experience. So let's say I want to have uh, uh, um, a less wider image of Apple here. Uh, so this is how I could adjust the width. Let me take a preview of this, essentially what the end experience user will uh, experience and view. I'm opening the Chrome console to illustrate how the delivery API is working in here. Let me refresh and you see here the Apple's 8 JPEG image, which is basically um, this API that it calls is basically the delivery API I'm talking of, where you have the asset ID, the asset name, and then the width as 362 as we set in the previous uh, interface here. So what this delivery API looks like, I'll very quickly take you to the uh, talks that we have shared for you, and I'll talk about uh, the delivery API specification very quickly for your quick perusal. Here is um, where we have a dynamic delivery API and the original delivery API, which I'll just talk about. So the illustration that I used was of the dynamic delivery API, where it accepts, basically, it, it helps you deliver the specific uh, specified image asset in the selected output format. So you can specify a bunch of parameters like crop, rotate, uh, flip, height, width, etc., and also can indicate whether you'd want to have a WebP rendition. So accordingly, it's a Boolean parameter. You can have uh, your uh, um, you know image rendition generated on the floor fly dynamically using this API. So you can similarly have uh, to have the original assets rendition, essentially as you had uploaded into AM uh, or A, uh, you can have this API invoke, which is Adobe Assets Deliver, Asset ID, SEO name, and invoke this API to get access to the delivery, uh, to the original uh, rendition of the asset. Now it talks about a bunch of details. How do you get it in the integration? I'll, I'll talk about those details in a bit, but, but let me first quickly talk about how this integration looks like and how you can essentially integrate asset selector UI component in any com any solution as we did here. So I'll take you to the uh, uh, the HTML essentially, which is responsible for incorporating uh, asset selector in this plugin. So let me take you to. So here is uh, uh, the response, uh, which is an HTML page here. Now let us take a bit and look into the details here. I hope it's visible to you. Um, the first thing that you have to do to incorporate an asset selector UI component is to include this JS. This is publicly available, and uh, you can use it in any solution uh, where you can include scripts, JS scripts, essentially. So by virtue of including the script, which is asset selectors JS, you get access to an object called pure JS selectors. Now you have to invoke this API called re render asset selector with auth flow, which is for the case when you want to uh, have the IMS login flow. I'll talk about the other variants in a bit, but in this case, we wanted to have IMS flow. And so we need to call the API called render asset selector with auth flow passing in two parameters. One is the container. It's an HTML element in which you want to have the asset selector uh, rendered. And the other is the asset selector properties. How, what these are, how these govern things. I'll talk about this the next. So asset selector properties here is where you configure the stuff that you need from asset selector. For, uh, for accessing this delivery service, you necessarily need to specify a repository ID, which is the delivery host of, of, the, uh, of the AM, uh, from, of uh, uh, the assets of which you want to leverage in the solution. 
you have the also this ability to customize filter where you specify the um, uh, the group types essentially if you want images or videos or let's say if you want specific types of filters which are bound with say type of image type of assets which is say jpeg png tiff so there is this uh, uh, this schema with which you can supply all these details are present in the uh, asset selector integration guide we have uh, shared with you and you can uh, refer to them as how you can integrate but this is uh, an illustration of how you can uh, you can configure an asset selector uh, to be incorporated in your solution very quickly, I'll touch upon the IMS properties with which you incorporated the IMS login flow, where you have to, spe where you have to specify the IMS client ID. You have to reach out to us for this client. Uh, you have to uh, specify a bunch of scopes. We have specified these in the guide and a bunch of other properties with which you can have the, uh, the um, uh, you know, authentication service registered, again, with the uh, object called PureJS selectors. The idea of this, um, you know, walkthrough with through the HTML is not about the low level details. It's about the fact that this very simple HTML is good enough to have you the have you have the experience of this kind of an interface where you have a modern UI, you have the full text, full text search capability. We have the ability to filter assets and incorporate them in your uh, consuming solution. So um, uh, this is this trivial as this modern HTML which is about uh, less than 120 lines, mostly consumed by this filter customization, you can have your asset selector microphone then up and running in your target solution. Very quickly, I'll take you to the, um, um, the uh, uh, asset selector integration, uh, integration guide and walk you through about what all things I just talked about and what all things you can, um, uh, as I can cover in this session in the interest of time. So let me quickly download. This is the link which is available for you all to um, have a look and refer to implement uh, integrations. So um, I'll jump on to running the setup. Essentially, this is uh, uh, the, the code that I just talked about where I was including the asset selector JS. I was conferring the selector properties and using this API called pure JS selector render asset selector to uh, get the component in place. This was for the case when, uh, when the users on the solution are on IMS. Now, uh, uh, upon, uh, okay, I just did not talk about the selection ability. So, of course, you have a bunch of assets. You can select single or multiple assets. And upon selection, you need to have a callback. It is in the callback when you actually use those details to embed into your experience, right? So, uh, we have this uh, uh, handle selection callback, which you specify in the asset selector properties. What do you get in, uh, what do you get in this handle selection callback is an array. No, uh, 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 irrespective of whether you have single asset selection or multi asset selection, you always get an array, and e each element in this array has a bunch of details. Now, the the idea of having to have asset selector is to get those delivery URLs so that you can embed them into your experience. So the key details that you need, as I just talked about in the delivery API, are present in the in, in the selection callback where you need the repository ID, the delivery host, you need the asset ID, you need the name, and you need the format. And based on your requirements, you can have that dynamic rendition of it configured and you can refer to the delivery uh, API specification, which is again available for you to view and incorporate in your target experience. So I've shared a brief illustration that based on these details, you could have the delivery API followed by Adobe Dynamic Media Deliver, then the asset ID, the asset name and the format in which you want it. You can specify the, the image uh, uh, parameters like width, height, and if you want to prefer WebP, which is an optimized format, of course, you should go for it. Uh, you can specify this, and you can have uh, this URL embedded into your experience and uh, have those delivered to the, to the users. Now, this was about uh, uh, those solutions on which the users are, are, are on IMS. Now, the case when the users are not on IMS, but the search is secure. So you have to specify uh, an IMS token. Now, how do you get an IMS token? One is the, one of the ways is you can acquire them from the dev console where you have uh, the integrations and you can go to the local uh, token, for example, get this local development token, which uh, maybe I'm just facing a glitch, but here you can get the local development token and incorporate. Well, this was a UI driven uh, flow. You also can programmatically access uh, to have the delivery token, which I think some will touch upon in our session, in our, in our, in our part of the session. Uh, but with this way, you can also enable uh, users who are not an IMS, but solutions can leverage this secure search in this manner. 
Apart from that, you have also uh, the steps to customize filters. You can also bind and have filters with custom properties, other properties which are not avail available out of the box. You can specify them as long as they are available. You can have those filters in place. Uh, you also have uh, steps to, you know, you have ways to co configure the additional information that you can view in the, in the model pop-up, which I just talked about uh, when I introduced asset selector component to you, that uh, additional detail about the asset in the, in the, in the interface right there. Uh, and you can also, enable the drag and drop mode as as typically in some interfaces you have uh, the asset selector in a tray and where you can drag and drop onto the experience that you're in onto the experience editor um, in the solution you're working on so these were some steps and some uh, you know facilities available to you uh, with this uh, very powerful uh, ui component i hope you get a chance and um, uh, integrate them and we uh, look forward to helping you take this integration to production. Well, this was all I had to talk about uh, the asset selector UI component integration. I will now request uh, Soumya to talk about uh, the integration pattern, which involves integration with Search API. So Soumya, over to you. Thanks, Harsh. Hello again. Now I will be walking you through the open API based integrations with experienced manager approved assets offering. Previously, Harsh talked about integrations via asset selector. I will talk about an alternative pattern to consume assets. The experience manager approved assets also exposes an open API compliant set of APIs. In case you want to go beyond asset selector, you can integrate your own UI or a content management system plugin, for example, WordPress, with these APIs. It provides you capabilities to search your approved assets and that's what I'm going to talk about next. Technical account-based integration or a non-IMS SUSE flow integration is one scenario where directly integrating with the search API would be helpful. Next, I will be demoing how an experienced author can edit a WordPress post by searching and embedding approved assets using a WordPress plugin that directly uses the search API's full text query. Then as an experience manager developer, we will explore the Adobe hosted playground and try out a few APIs. Next, we will generate an API client using code gen that the experience manager developer can effortlessly use in their projects to integrate with our APIs. So let's get started. So we have this, uh, approved assets plugin installed in WordPress, which is based on the asset manager framework plugin. Internally, it is making use of the approved asset search API to list, filter and search assets in the WordPress media library. So let's get started by editing a WordPress post. So this is a uh, post and I uh, insert an image by first searching it in the media library of approved assets. So I search for mango. I got some results. I select this one. I copy the URL of uh, this image and paste it in my browser. And look, this image can be accessed using the delivery URL. I now embed it in my post. So here we are respecting central asset governance that is single source of truth. You'd notice that the asset is not embedded as a binary, but as a URL, and thus is showing the latest effective state always. Similarly, I can search and filter on videos and add them in my post. So I search for a video here. Again, I search for mango. I got some assets and I select this for my post. Now I preview it in a new tab and I can see my post here, a beautiful mango basket and a video of mango, which I can play. Uh, so that's all in the WordPress. Now uh, moving ahead, you get access to the complete search specification when you use the APIs directly. This is the API playground that I will use to build search requests. The page is publicly accessible and link to it sh uh, uh, shall be available on our resources slide. Here you can input your program and environment coordinates of your AMCS instance. 
and authorize using the IMS token generated via the dev console. And the API key as asset search service. So uh, let's dive deep, deep in this. So we have support for multiple queries in the search request. For full, for full text search, we may use the match query to retrieve all records where the value of the field is specified uh, between an upper or a lower boundary. We can use the range query. To sort the results on a field in ascending or descending order, one can use the sort query, and we can specify the pagination parameters in the request. Finally, we get the search response, which is an array of JSON documents corresponding to the matched assets. Each JSON document has an ID field, which can be used to compose the asset delivery request. For a demo, to perform a basic full text search, You can specify the text uh, as in the match query and an operator, which could be contained, starts with, ends with, etc., and the fields array. So let's try this out. So here I'm searching for mango. This is the same request I used in the WordPress plugin I just showcased. I execute. I got some results here. If you scroll down, we see we got total nine assets. And uh, now let's take an example of a complex query that we support. So let me quickly gather the query. So if someone is searching for high resolution assets of Kiwi or Guava, except MP4 videos, then sort the results by image width in descending order and size in the ascending order. And then finally fetch the top five assets. This is uh, the complex search request corresponding to such a requirement that we support. I execute. And I got some results again. This time I got five assets. Now moving ahead, I will demonstrate how to generate supported API clients using Swagger auto generation tools. On the left hand side, you can see the full API spec. It has complete details about our API request, response structures, as well as the different authentication schemas that we support. To generate a supported client, you just need to click on Generate Client and choose the language of your choice. For example, Java. The generated code gets downloaded as a zip archive that you can use in your projects. Now, in case you need fine grain control, then you can also use the CodeGen Maven plugin that provides multiple configurable options as you may, can see on my screen. Now, this is a sample uh, project that I have created. Let's quickly generate the API client uh, and models using the Maven plugin and the search API spec as I've posted here. So I run Maven clean install. And this is how the generated client uh, and the search request objects, all those models are created here. We can quickly go over them. This is the API client, and this is the search request built with this plugin. So that's all about the demo. Let's quickly go back to slides. So previously in this session, Harsh talked about the use cases and the value these offerings can bring to the business. Now we, now we will briefly touch upon how these integrations would be beneficial to the developers. We have built a system keeping faster mechanisms to integrate content authoring systems or time to value. And lower uh, total cost of ownership, TCO as the guiding principles. As we saw, the open API compliant APIs coupled with standardized tooling and good community support makes it very easy for developers to integrate with the systems in a language of choice. With open API definition at hand, it is effortless for the developer to use any playground included those hosted by Adobe to quickly experiment with the API. All these features enable developers to quickly integrate a systems lowering the TTV. 
Open API compliant APIs support auto generation of clients. All that the integrating developers need should they want to use new capabilities is just the up to date YML file from where they can develop and adapt the integrations at their own pace. API backward compatibility ensures developers do not need to worry about regressions while updating versions. Additionally, CodeGen is also capable of generating integration tests, making it easier to maintain the code. Let's now see the next steps. For further discussions, we have this channel. You may scan the QR code. For resources, you can visit the URL adobe.ly slash ngdm mentioned on the right hand side of the slide. This page has links to a sign up form, API playground for search and delivery APIs, as we just showcased, as well as the details of the asset in selector integration. And with that, we thank you very much for your time and attention. We hope you enjoyed your session and it is valuable for you. With that, it seems we got some questions that we can follow up on. Yeah, just uh, just a second. Let me uh, let me bring Harsh in here. Um, there we go. Uh, yeah, and if you, um, Somi, if you can go back to that slide that you were on with the QR code. Yeah, there you go. Let's just keep that up um, for uh, just while we're doing the, the kind of Q&A section here. Uh, let's see. Let me see. Where did that go? Okay. Um, so most of the questions are answered in chat, um, but uh, definitely um, here's some ones that we can put because uh, just for the recording, right? Um, be good to to answer some of these. So. Are there any differences in the search of asset selector and search API? Yeah, I can take that up. So essentially, asset selector UI component that I dem demonstrated uh, leverages search <clears throat> API at, at its backend. So, so basically, it uses the same search. So there's nothing different. As long as, as far as the full text search capability of asset selector is concerned, it leverages the operator called contains. Uh, as Soumya talked about, the various operators that you have for the match query. It leverages uh, contains operator for the match clause uh, against whatever text you specify. So that is how it crafts the search queries and internally uses uh, the search API, which Samir talked about. All right, very cool. Um, so, what are the types of uh, sorry, which which types of assets does the delivery engine support? You might have covered that. Uh, so yeah, we support uh, images and videos. Uh, so yeah. Mm, uh, so most of the opt optimized and out of the box available, um, um, you know, uh, mechanisms we have and formats we support, they are supported. Uh, I can touch upon a bit more on the videos. We support uh, adaptive streaming, so we have support for uh, HLS and Dash protocols. So they are they are again more optimized. Mm -hmm. So as I talked about, they they uh, you know uh, they uh, they are uh, aimed at uh, the fast end user experience. So. So yeah, we support those formats, and and of course there is a lot more in action, and you'll see much more, uh, you know, more formats and more more uh, innovation in this area uh, to be rolled out in a in the next few weeks, uh, essentially. Okay, right on. Thanks, Harsh. Um, okay, so can the delivery URL domain be IP whitelisted, or is it open to the world? Uh, sorry, uh, could you please come again, Ron? Um, yeah, so can the delivery URL domain be IP whitelisted or is it open to the world? It is currently open to the world, but uh, we are working on mechanisms with which we can uh, have restrictions and restrictions are across various dimensions. So yes, uh, uh, they are in in, in future, uh, in near future, we'll, we're going to have those, but at the moment, no, they're, they're open. Okay, and which is what makes them available in all, all all the solutions for for consumptions. So yeah. Okay, right on. Thank you so much. Um, so how can custom metadata fields be used for asset selector based on integration? So uh, we do support. Uh, you know, I just talked about how we can customize filters. So we do support uh, customizing filters. We can have those filters bound with other properties. Uh, those properties can be those which are available out of the box uh, uh, in the assets uh, as managed by AM, or they could also be those ex uh, those uh, um, you know um, uh, 
extra configured custom metadata that, that users configure in AM. So those also can be something with which the filters can be bound with. So that's also available um, uh, in, in the filter customizability. I, I did talk about this in the accessibility integration guide also, and also in the integration we demonstrated in the WordPress. So you have those capabilities. You can very well have those uh, filters bound okay. with custom metadata. Yeah. OK, excellent. Um, thank you so much. Uh, just a couple more questions. So is uh, asset delivery and search supported on AEM 6.5? Uh, so AM 6.5 uh, is supported as a consumer. It cannot be a source of assets. So we have uh, rolled out this and of course, and, and in, in um, AM 6.5 SP 17 to be rolled out, uh, you will have this ability as I talked about in the in the beginning as, as the use case where AM sites is also a, um, a CMS. You can have those assets, but those assets needs to reside in an AMCS instance. AMCS can act as a consumer of, uh, AM 6.5 can act as a consumer of uh, those, those assets managed by AMC. It cannot act as a source of assets uh, 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 per se. Okay. Um, hey, is uh, video delivery supported by the capability? Yes, uh, we leverage out of the box performance and optimize formats and protocols. And we support uh, adaptive streaming of videos. Ah, oh, right on. Awesome. Um, hey, how do we acquire the technical account token when we use the WordPress plugin backed by the search API? You might have covered that. Yes. So in the demo, we have embedded the token as generated from the developer console. You can also uh, do the same, or you may programmatically generate one using a technical user account and use it in your plugin. Right on. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, OK, last question. Um, are the approval rejection deletion operations instant? Uh, it is instantaneous, uh, since nothing is for a distributed system with this services. But we have strived to keep it sufficiently low as to not impact business activities. A lab test indicate 95 percentile less than 10 minutes. It can certainly be faster than that. All right. Um, well, thank you both. Uh, one, for staying up so very late. I know it is very late in India. Um, so thank you so much uh, for being here to present with us today. And um, yeah, uh, well done. And uh, have a good night's sleep after this. Sure. Thanks, thank Ron, and thank you for this opportunity. We are really looking forward to having more signups, and we can so that we can, um, you know, help uh, um, uh, solution engineers and developers essentially to bring their inter integrations to production. So we are uh, even far more excited. So staying up late is not a problem at all. We are very excited about this. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you for your enthusiasm and uh, joining us today. Uh, and with that, um, I will. Um, We'll head over to a stretch break uh, and we will start uh, in about, uh, I think, 30 minutes or so uh, with our last session, the fireside chat. So stick around for that. Thanks, guys. Thank you.